Yeah. So the reason that all Chinese transliteration is basically garbage and illegible, unless you know exactly what the transliteration language is supposed to sound like, um, is because there was just one dude who had no fucking idea what he was doing and just kind of made it all up as he went along. So instead of a sh sound being sh, he made it x. Instead of a ch sound being ch, he made it a q and things like that. So and Xi Xing Ji, according to the Google Translate lady. Yeah. So. Or the westward. Or journey to the west. Westward. Yeah. Anyway, reflux, everybody. We're doing more Chinese CGI things from Tencent this week. Yeah. You know, like this. Fair enough, this doesn't look too bad. It it I, I'd play this PS3 game. Of the yeah, ones okay. of these that yeah. we've seen, which is like four or five, this is probably the most coherent. I will give it that much. There is the least amount of cultural mythology that they kind of expect us to get without question here. So If it were any other country, I would say maybe they're learning. But uh, I think that's just purely coincidental and no one gives a shit. I think this is a case of it's just that basic. That you just kind of get it. Yeah, it's fair. Um, so Xi Qingji uh, is basically framed as a sequel to... Uh, the, the book, you know, the whole Sun Wukong and... Journey to the West? Yeah, that whole thing. I think it was supposed to be like a sequel type thing or something. I don't know. I think that's what the summary said. I can't quite remember. But in any case, it's, it's that sort of thing with um, there is a holy text... Or something that has to be uh, delivered from one place to another. For okay, yeah, the, it, the sake of myth. Yeah, it is a sequel where they had the sutra, and then the sutra has gone missing, and now heaven has sent its army to go searching for the sutra. And we have to journey to the west to hide the sutra. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to give 10 cent a hot tip right now. Okay? I'm going to give them some really really good advice. That might sound really pompous and pretentious for me to say I can give this multi-billion dollar corporation that is basically an arm of the Chinese government worthwhile advice as I sit in my fucking flat in the middle of bumfuck Stoke-on-Trent, England uh, living on a shoestring budget, basically. So it might seem a little pretentious for me to say, hey, I can give you some worthwhile information on how you should run your business, gigantic corporation. But, um... Hey, Tencent, you know that gigantic... 30 second to a minute long intro where you do really really high budget animation of like three different richly detailed settings and then you have the show which is like a tenth of that quality <laughs> um maybe don't do that <laughs> Maybe don't have your intro make the rest of your show look like shit. Yeah, I was like, wait a second. Is this is this intro related to the show? And it's like, nope. This is just their intro. <laughs> like, it's... 
I I was impressed for a second until I was like, wait, this doesn't look like anything to do with the show. Is this? Yeah, this this is just the company intro. The show isn't gonna look anything like this, is it? And then the show came on. And I'm like, hmm. This is an impressive level of self sabotage. It's also just kind of boring. It's just a real slow panning shot over a bunch of basically a figurine, a bunch of statues. Talk about the intro. Yeah. Um, it's. I'm speed running the anime right now. <laughs> so. It's 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 like some of the some of the statues look good, and some of them just look like they're plastic. Yeah, they're just like marble. I, I, I guess the terracotta thing would make more sense, but if they were more brown, but. And yet, it still looks ten times better than anything in the actual show. Yeah, this show came out in twenty eighteen. It does not look like that. Yeah, so that was that was the first thing I noticed because that was the first thing they showed me. But oh well. So then we get the actual show, which, as established, doesn't look as good. But whatever. Um, we'll move past that bit of self sabotage. Um, so again, it doesn't look terrible maybe i'm just used to bad 3d anime but it doesn't like... look anywhere near as bad as a lot of other shows that we've seen of this type look like we we've we've seen some shit we have seen i i feel like we've run the gamut when it comes to chinese cgi bullshit in terms of budget and quality like mm-hmm. we've seen the absolute bargain bin stuff that was probably independently produced and then ten cents swooped in and was like, Hey, we'll produce this by which we mean we'll just take it and slap it on a screen. And then yeah. we've seen like the stuff that they actually put effort into and still didn't generally look great, but you know, it it was more detailed. And on that scale, this looks toward the latter side of the scale. Like, it, it's 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 very much solid animation as as that goes. I would not mistake this for an independent project. Um, but yeah, there is a little girl riding a dragon, Chinese style dragon, because obviously Chinese. Um. And they see a wolf, and it's hurt. And the little girl is like, hey, can we help it? And the dragon's like, "Uh, it's the circle of life, and it rules us all. Yeah, basically, that whole thing of just, it it should die because it's going to, that's just how things work. And she's like, no, I'm going to save it. And she gives it a crystal necklace and does some bullshit and it heals the wolf. And she's like, cool, bye. Have this magic necklace. It's it's gonna be good. Okay, later. Hmm. So I had this conversation with my brother a few days ago, actually. Anything Chinese related has something to do with cultivation. Every every oh, yeah. piece of Chinese media. So I think, with my limited understanding of the system, um, she just sent him a couple echelons up of that ladder. So now he's more powerful as his baseline or something. Basically, yeah. Um, she gave him a jump start in becoming a greater more significant being um which they do make a big deal of later in the episode um so we flash forward and we're in much nicer climate because it was a little wintry before but now it's you know summery and maybe a little tropical or temperate we're not entirely sure um but it's very foresty it's nice 
and there is a dude. He is uh, very tan or moderately dark skinned. It's hard to tell. Um, and this is the wolf that we saw before. And uh, he wants to get a fish for the girl that saved him before. Um, it's been a bit of a time jump. So he's going fishing and stuff. And it was kind of a cute sequence, I'm not going to lie, of him trying desperately to get the fish. Because the fish was being an asshole. But, you know, mm -hmm. that's what things do when they're trying to not die. General rule of thumb. Um, anyway. The he, one singular fish in this entire pond. Yeah, well, the budget's budget. Um, <laughs> Animating more than one fish is hard. And would raise questions of how he managed to not get one of the dozens. Maybe he just wanted the yeah. nice one. Anyway, um, he gets the fish, and then there is a forest tree person earth earth god emerges from the ground and the fish just kind of despawns from existence a little bit <laughs> the, head, the head pops up right underneath the fish and then the fish is just gone for a little while and then it mysteriously comes right back yeah it's very well Anyway, Wolf and uh, Forest Spirit have a conversation about how the wolf is trying to impress the girl from before. And, oh, it's literally puppy love. Um, and then stuff happens in the sky and the Forest Spirit freaks out and is like, hey... Don't tell anyone I'm here. And okay, we pan over to the to the dragons. Yeah, the dragons with their fucking cool facial hair. Yeah, that was a good mustache. That was a good beard. That was all good stuff. I appreciate that. Running the forge and shit, hammering talking about stuff so apparently there are the sutras and the heavens want them back and the dragons are like no nah. so uh they're go the the armies of the heavens are gonna come down and be like hey give us them back and the dragons are gonna be like no nah. And they're going to have to fight. Yeah. So the dragons who can turn into people and are for most of this scene um, uh, go out and get ready into formation to fight the heavens. Um, and the girl from before is now a pretty lady. She's grown up. And... She's like, hey, I want to help, or something. And the dragons are like, nah. It's your job to live. Yeah, because we're probably going to fucking die here. <laughs> so, you know, may maybe you don't do that. We'll, we'll hold them off and distract them. You get away, basically. Hmm. I'm guessing that this is going to turned to being like, okay, so she's gonna uh, grab the sutras with uh, Wolf Boy, and those two are going to escape and go yeah. on the run. Yeah, and they're gonna go on a journey. To the west! west. Yeah. Uh, so Wolf Boy, Wolf Boy shows up, and he's like, hey, I got you this fish! And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, that's that's great, Wolf Boy. That's, it's that's ten pounds! Yeah. Uh, and they're like, hey, some shit's gonna go down. You should probably leave. And Wolf Boy's like, no, if you're gonna fight, then I wanna fight too. And the dragon's like, fucking 
no, dude, you are a wolf that became a human capable of intelligent thought. You value that more, dude. The 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 dragon man literally just face palms. Yeah. I mean, think like it's established that this is a creature that is very new to this whole being an intelligent creature thing. <laughs> so kind of impulsive and you know has a lot of the wolfy instincts of like being territorial and stuff so this makes sense they do they do make that very apparent in the dialogue he is he is that to a t so that's well done yeah i like this whole thing is is well established i like how they've put thought into how these characters work um which feels like is more than we usually get from this type of show but um yeah so he basically the dragons basically say hey you and her should probably go while while we take care of business and then the light bridge from heaven appears and the armies arrive and we get introductions to the generals of heaven who are like hey, give us the sutras. And the dragons are like, nah. We don't have them. Okay, give us the sutras. No, we're not going to. We can't because they're not here. Yeah. Wink. Okay, one last chance. Give, give, give. Nah. Okay, let's fight then. And then fights happen, and those generals that got some introductions, like with names and shit, a couple of those die. Um, <laughs> just right away. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> just like, yeah, hype these dudes up for like 10 seconds of this 20-minute show. And, well, not even 20 minutes. I think it was like 15 minutes when I actually counted it out with the intros and outros cut off. Um, but it's yeah, they get... Yeah, um, they gave him like these hype intros, and then they just like Bleh! and he's dead. <laughs> it's fucking great. There, there was a definite couple of them who just ate it real fast. They, yeah. We got like their name, and then a second later they died. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe these are supposed to be figures of like important parts of Chinese myth, and we just don't know. Um, I have to assume. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, dragons are fighting against heavens, and then the episode ends. <laughs> yeah. It just zooms in on the heavenly general guy, and he smirks, and then the episode ends. Yeah. Like eighteen minutes into the twenty-four minute long video. Yeah, which if you you know also chop off the ten cent intro and everything. Yeah. Hmm. It's like th three minutes of um, end credits, and then like two minutes of of opening credits. Like it, it, it's not a very long uh, show because it's it's an O and A. It's not like a full anime production. Um. So I understand that. Uh. I'm going to repeat what I said before. Um, that sure was a PS3 game I would play. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, this... This is definitely the kind of thing I would expect from a 2018 show made in China. Because it looks kind of bootleg as shit... But at the same time, this is also the best one of these that I've actually seen. <laughs> they are usually so completely incomprehensible and look way more garbage. So I was pleasantly surprised by this. I was expecting so much more shit. I, the only part of this that felt like this show expects me to understand this is like during the battle, one of the characters has the some little moment where like they get stabbed in the head and he's like 
my head will not fall. And it's like, what? My head what? won't be taken by the likes of you, is what he said. That's it. Okay. I wasn't sure if that meant something specific or just straight up, you're not going to kill me. I've, so. I've heard that phrase before. Um, I don't think in that very specific context. Um, I think it might just be the dragons are supposed to be hard-headed, which makes sense, because, you know, mm. they are mostly head. They have the big tail and the head, and those are the two features of a dragon. <laughs> so I would expect, you know, hard-headed to make sense, especially with the way that that guy was depicted for the entire show. Um, so, yeah. I was okay with this. I definitely wouldn't watch more. Uh, yeah, I, of can, my own I can agree with that. But as these things go, it's so much more competent than most of these that I'm willing to give it a pass. <laughs> like, gold star for most improved kind of energy. <laughs> Any other, any other I, th thoughts? I think I think that I'm not going to watch more of this but you know what that's fine I, I didn't feel like I was uh, dying on the inside so I called out a win so we've seen a lot of anime where almost nothing happens in the first episode this this is that to the extreme this is really bad like, okay, we saw a scene where someone came back from the dead. We saw that guy fish. We saw a brief blacksmithing scene. And then we saw a very small battle. And that's it. The battle didn't even conclude. Yeah. yeah. So we saw the first fraction of a battle. That was like four or five scenes. I feel mm. like maybe if they had the credits scroll faster, they could have had that battle have a more climactic end. Like, say... Hey, main dragon dude dies, and girl sees it, and that's the end of the episode. That, I feel like that's it. There's no definitive cliffhanger. It's just, the guy just smirks, and that's it. Yeah, just just make the credit scroll, like, 25% faster so we can get an extra 30 seconds of that battle scene in this episode, and have it actually have a worthwhile conclusion doesn't have to completely conclude, but it has to conclude for the sake of the story it's telling, which is that girl's start of the monomyth, basically, is what it looked like. You know, the you can't go home again thing. Have her granddad or dad or dragon papa die, and then we have the basic conceit of the show established. She's going to go and get the sutras, and journey to the west, presumably, and we have our inciting incident. That's what the show needed. I, I assume all that happens in the next episode, but it should have I, happened I in this episode. Like yeah, it should have happened in the first episode. Yeah, that's <clears> some pretty <throat> basic level entry stuff. So, and unlike you, I feel fully confident in bad-mouthing this gigantic corporation and telling them what they should be doing with their money. Yes, do that. This this was done poorly. This was just bad. Ah. Uh. Oh, we roll? We roll. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, L is an awkward one for me to say in a funny way. Let's uh, take the L. Yeah. 36. All right. 17. What do we got? Uh, uh, what the fuck? Okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay. I'm curious. I have the feeling it's going to be hard to pronounce. Is, is, is it another Chinese series? Lichi de Hikari Club. Or Lichi Light Club. The story starts with nine boys all in the Hikari Club. I don't know whether that's supposed to be a name or the word light. Um, who I are driven to light. make the ultimate artificial intelligence and will stop at nothing to create it. The leader of the club, Zera, is an attractive boy who is very sick and twisted. He has complete control of the members. The second in command and previous leader, Tamiya, is not happy with the way Zera is controlling everyone, so he tries to reclaim the club, and eventually everything begins to crumble and turn into chaos. Okay, this uh, came out in 2012. And uh, it's eight episodes. I'm trying to see how long the episodes are themselves. Yeah, no comments. Um, episode one, no comments. Okay. So, Lynchy, uh, the first episode is two minutes and 30 seconds long. Ew, nope. Okay, redo it again. Yep, 36. Yeah. Okay, let me pull this back up. I was like, oh, yeah. Um, from 36, from the top, here we go. Three. Uh, done that one. Go again. 26. 26. Oh, okay. We got the Love Live Ow. School Idol Project. Ow, motherfucker. Was Chill. that too loud? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Otonokizaka High School stands on the border of three cities Akihabara, a pop culture mecca that's evolving by the minute, Kanda, a conservative culture city where history and tradition reign supreme, and Jinbo. A quiet area reserved for a more mature, sophisticated population. Amidst the culture clash, the school now faces closure due to the enrollment of fewer and fewer students. With the school planning to close within three years, nine female students come together with one thing in mind, form a pop idol group to revive the school's popularity and keep it from shutting down. Holy shit, this is basically a teen movie from like the 90s. Um, <laughs> in order to protect our beloved school, there's only one thing we can do become pop stars their goal is simple become an overnight sensation and use their nationwide media exposure to promote their community center and bring in a wave of new students to the healing area uh anyway school not community center i'm taking the piss uh, a simple but solid plan okay if you say so uh is it <laughs> So fucking 90s. Uh, naturally, they're nervous and wonder if this plan can really succeed. But for better or worse, their new journey has begun. All we can ask for is just a tiny bit of support from you. We truly believe that with your help, we can change the world around us. We will make our dreams come true. Play our gotcha so, game. So first off, if there's a high school... In the middle of three massive cities, I refuse to believe that their studentship is so low that they're they're closing down because of a lack of students. Yeah. So between May, Akihabara, it, Kanda, and Jinbo is the middle of fucking Tokyo. I feel like maybe it's because I'm used to the crowded American school system, but. I don't feel like I'm wrong. <laughs> why would... Why? That's stupid. But whatever. It's it's the hand-wavy conceit of the show, and I will accept it. 
Don't yeah. worry about it. We've we've got to save the community center at the ski resort, you guys. Uh, gonna need it's a montage. Fun. It's montage. time to join the big contest. What's the contest about? Doesn't matter. If we win, we win the movie. It's just so weird to see this concept done, like, by a completely different culture, and I have to wonder, were they inspired by this, this sort of thing? Like, it's two decades after this sort of thing was popular in the West, so it conceivably could be. Like, that tends to be how things work with, you know, overseas... Uh, trends like there's a there's a bit of a delay like there was a time when uh 70s and 80s cartoons were big in the uk and that was the 90s uh so what's what's the antagonist of this gonna be a cartoonish bully like their point is to get their school on the map like get their name out there or whatever The school board, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the physical embodiment of entropy. I don't. Maybe it's the three different cities that have wildly different cultural viewpoints, because you know, Akihabara, trendy, you know, otaku bullshit, and then the old school like traditional stuff and then fucking uh, we don't want to deal with anyone else's bullshit in the middle and then you know Japanese systems of cultural oppression of don't be a weirdo that sticks out and then you have a school that's in the middle of three different districts so you end up with a situation where everyone feels like they stand out and that's terrible because Japan Ah, we're all different, and it's confusing and scary. And that's how the school starts shutting down. Because no one wants to go you to know, the school that's in the middle. That's actually a fair point. If each city has their own schools already, and it's, ju it's just this middle school that no one wants to homogenize, then, yeah, okay, fair enough. That's a, that's a fairly powerful cultural tale, or at least enough to justify a show sure why not love it could, life it could also just be an excuse plot so we have nine cute girls doing cute things who all look different maybe kind of presumably they but have three basic archetypes between the nine of them <laughs> well yes Yeah, so that's what we're doing next week is what he says when we have like 10 episodes of this in a backlog. Uh, <laughs> uh, I get a week off from writing next week. I'm, I, I can say that I'm going to fucking start uploading them. I'm probably lying. Uh, so yeah, that's an episode. Bye, bye, yeah, bye. Bye. Yes. <laughs>